I want to talk to Ryan because this one sounds interesting. This, this should be a good one, hopefully, right? Hi, Ryan. How you doing? Welcome to the Atheist Experience. What would you like to talk about? Oh, hi. Thank you for uh, answering my call. I wasn't sure I'd get through. Yeah, we, I, I, I picked you out of the pile, Ryan. It's your lucky day. It was, it was divine intervention, probably. Oh, wow. what, what happened? <laughs> what can we do with? What can we do for you today, Ryan? What would you like to talk about? Um. Well, I just uh, came across this channel, and uh, I'm not sure if this has been discussed before. Uh, you know, proof of intelligent design. Mm-hmm. Um. As far as the complexity and order of everything that we know of uh, on Earth, solar system, and beyond, you know, how, what scientific proof is there for atheism? I need you to expound upon what do you mean by what science, atheism means that I don't believe in any of the proposed gods. That's what, yeah. that's what it means to me. So there's been lots of different gods proposed. Um, Myriad gods have been proposed throughout the history of time, and I reject all of them because I, they don't make any sense to me. They seem to be logically inconsistent. They seem to have contradictions in their own definitions. Uh, if you look, if you well, let's start this way. Why don't you define what a god is for me first, and then we can go from there? Because I don't think that that's going to be uh, yeah. Because be if somebody says a way. god exists, the burden of proof is on them. It's not yeah. on like if somebody says I don't believe in Bigfoot, it's not up to them to prove that there isn't a Bigfoot, yeah. or I don't believe in Loch Ness monster. It's not up to them to prove there isn't one. The people who think there is one need to demonstrate it. Yeah. And saying what scientific proof is there for an atheism is almost like a nonsense statement yeah. to me. So why don't you start with what your definition of a God is, and then we can kind of suss out between us if why it doesn't make sense to us and see if we can understand why it does make sense to you. Okay. Uh, well, the only reason why I pose that question is because a lot of atheists ask for scientific proof of God. Yes. There is no scientific proof. for. Good. Atheists. Thanks. Then, then I guess we're done, right? So, see, here's the thing. You're right. A lot of atheists ask for scientific proof of, of God because people believe that there's a God that interacts with reality in some detectable way, and yet they can never offer evidence for that. So it's it's when it's like what I was saying before. If somebody believes that there's a Loch Ness monster, it's up to them to present evidence for it. It's not up to somebody else to prove it wrong. So the fact that atheists would ask for evidence for God is natural. Everyone should be asking for evidence for God, and nobody should believe in a God until the evidence is overwhelming. Yeah, and that's not to say that all evidence is scientific, too. Like, you can look at philosophical argumentation and maybe attempt to get to it that way, I guess, but even that um, doesn't work out for me. I actually just had a long conversation with a young young man who's uh, been drafting philosophy papers the other day about the de definitions of God, and we were talking about the different types of God definitions, like classical and neoclassical definitions for gods and the way that, and for Christian gods specifically, uh, and the way that they have internal inconsistencies once they're analyzed. So the reason that people might ask for scientific evidence for God is because of somebody is saying God is interacting with the world, like Matt said. And the reason somebody might ask for philosophical evidence for God, because there are different types of evidence, is because somebody is asserting that there is a God. And you can only really prove that philosophically if you take away the interaction component but when you say prove scientific evidence for atheism like can you see why that's a nonsense statement to somebody like me yeah i understand that yep yeah okay cool one thing, I appreciate that that. Dawkins did, one thing that richard dawkins wrote one time was that scientific beliefs are supported by evidence and they mm -hmm. get results and myths and faiths are not and do not meaning they don't get results from this yes so which that's I right. believe myths, but as far as faiths go, say, for example, the Christian uh, faith, uh, basically we have, you know, written uh, written words from prophets from, say, the Old Testament from about, what, 2000 B.C. Uh, up, up until, you know, Jesus came. Um, in order for all of that to be nonsense, um I mean, where, where, where did God originate from in human history? Before the Old Testament, you had the Egyptians, and they believed in sacrificing babies. And Oh, wow. Whoa, you're going way all over the place. Look, because, 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 sorry. So, yeah, because <laughs> first of all... You're all over the board, Ryan. I mean, you're asking where did the God concept originate from, and we don't fully know, but we have a pretty good understanding of, of the timeline or the... the 
ancestry tree for religious beliefs, beginning back with simple notions of animism and spirits. You know, we, we see the, the, the wind move and other things like that. But when you talk about, I, 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 don't, I don't know, you just went straight to the sacrifice of children, which has nothing to do with whether or not something's true or not. Yeah, it's an argument from consequence. Because I, I really want to know why you think it's true, not what you think is bad about other things. Yeah. You, you, seem to, you seem to have started with, hey, you can't prove atheism scientifically, and hey, these other religions are bad. All I want to know is why do you think what you think is true? Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, the only reason why I pose that uh, question for scientific proof of atheism is because a lot of them use that as a reason to say, well, you can't prove but do, this, so therefore. No, no I, I understand why you asked the question. Do you understand why the question is, is wrong? Hmm. It, it, yeah. Cause it, what you're doing is court, courts, courts, demo, courts require the prosecution to demonstrate that the defendant is guilty. Do courts require defendants to show that they're innocent ever? Um, well, they're, they're pro innocent until proven guilty, but that's, you know. There's no requirement that a defendant demonstrate their innocence, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no requirement mm -hmm. that a non-believer demonstrate that the proposition isn't true. Okay. Well, you, one thing I wanted to bring up is... Um, the objective standard of morality. Oh, oh my gosh. So this is this is really just troubling, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Because you start with born again Christian but what? He's a born again Christian, I think. Christian, so I, I hold I hold the belief of, you know, the Bible as the word of God. So uh basically the the morality issue, you know, who said that thou, thou shalt not kill? Nobody had to say thou shalt not kill. And if, and if you think that a God saying thou shalt not kill defines what morality is, then I don't know what you're talking about. And also, Ryan, like you said a couple of things that kind of contradict yourself too. Like you said, where did the, where do gods come from? And if you look back in history, there was conceptualizations of God that existed before Christianity or G Judaism existed, right? So that means that the conceptualization of God existed before the, the religion that you currently believe in was plausible or existed like you recognize that and then you said but they had a conceptualization of god and sacrificed babies so in your argument that you made to us you essentially said there's possible conceptualizations of god in which it could be morally conceivable that it's okay to sacrifice babies but based on your subjective standards so your internal innate sort of understanding of what is good or bad you understand that that it, that can't be a good thing to do. You recognize that as a truth for yourself. But I don't think that, and you said you were born again Christian as well. So I wouldn't think that before you found Christianity, that you thought it was okay to sacrifice babies and then somehow had an emotional experience that somehow gave you this conception of morality through your belief in God that changed your mind about sacrificing babies. So if you're looking to ground morality, like maybe just look at yourself and what you're saying as counter arguments, because it seems to contradict you seem to be contradicting yourself. Okay, well, I'm wondering. I'm wondering two two things. Real, I'm mean, two things real quick, Ryan. One, if you're outside or whatever, it sounds like you're in a wind tunnel, and so it's very difficult to to oh. hear and understand you. But you have John speaker. Yeah, but but in the course in the course of this call, you started with talking about the complexity and intelligent design, and then you went to the origins of gods, and then you went to morality. We haven't been able to dig in substantively on anything, and so I'm just wondering, why are you convinced that what you believe is true? The biggest convincing factor that I have is that I cried out to Jesus at my lowest point, and I received the Holy Spirit of truth, which guides me into all truth and righteousness. The Bible. How can you, how can you demonstrate that? Because right now, that's just a story and something that you're convinced of. So you had a personal experience, Ryan. Yeah, so, well, you, you well, don't demonstrate atheism. Atheism is a belief that's based on my understanding and assessment of the evidence. So what you're saying is you didn't even understand and make an assessment of the evidence. You had a personal experience that usurps any assessment of evidence. 
And it seems to me right now that you're attempting to throw every apologetic that you may have heard kind of against the wall and see what sticks in, in rapid succession, as opposed to in, engaging in just one. And what it does boil down to is you seem to have had a personal experience that was powerful enough that it compelled you into belief. And now you're looking to counter atheists by throwing things against the wall one at a time. And when they don't work, you really just have to accept the fact that your belief structure comes down to you had a personal experience. That's not transmissible. It's not transferable. It's not externally understandable by anyone outside of yourself. So that's fine. You had a personal experience. I accept that as a reality for you. But if you're coming with our, if you're coming to argue with atheists about why people should evidentially believe in God, you're going to need something a little bit stronger than your personal experience. And I actually won't completely agree, but go ahead, Ryan. Oh, let's fight, Matt. <laughs> we, can, we can in a minute because okay. uh, I, I, I can't disprove somebody's personal experience. However, mm -hmm. um, if he's the view that he should be convinced by his personal experience is demonstrably flawed. It is. It is a. It is a non. Oh, I didn't think he should be. I said I can understand that he is. Yes. So, let, Ryan, you had some experience, and you're convinced that that the Holy Spirit entered you. Why are you convinced that that's what happened? Um, I bear the fruit. That's uh, that means that means nothing. That means nothing. Okay. What what makes to, you an atheist? To say to say you bear the fruit. I'm looking for what reason are you convinced that you reached out to God and God granted you with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is the bearance of the truth. He, he's the one that gives you the truth so that you are unable to understand the words sure. of God, the Bible. And, uh, you know, when you pray to God, he does. How do, you, how do you know that you have the Holy Spirit and are understanding it correctly? Um, how do I know I have the Holy Spirit? Well, like I said, you know, it's a promise of God. I don't care about promises. I can promise all kinds of things. I care about proof. Like I don't have any scientific proof of having the Holy Spirit. Do you have any any sort of so the point is here, Ryan, I'm trying to point out that okay. the line of reasoning that you use to conclude that you have the Holy Spirit is flawed. Mm -hmm. It it is not a line of reasoning that can lead to the conclusion that you've made. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. If uh Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? No. And what evidence would you need and what proof would you need in order yeah. to make that decision? So I don't know what evidence or proof I would need to demonstrate that a God exists or that Christianity is true. But if there is a God, that God knows and should be able to do it without any problem. And the fact that that God hasn't done it demonstrates that either that God doesn't exist or doesn't want me to know exist. Either way, not my problem. However, if it turns out there was a God and Christianity was true, that God would have a lot of explaining to do before I could ever be an adherent of a religion because that God in the Bible sanctions slavery, makes women inferior to men, um, has all sorts of sanctions, murder, atrocities, child sacrifice, everything. But why would that be wrong? Why, why would it be wrong? Yeah, why is murder wrong? Why is stealing wrong? Just because it hurts uh, the victim? Hitler yes. said killing was good. So... Wait, wait, Hitler said what? Because I think you're getting ready to embarrass yourself and look really stupid. Hitler said what? He didn't say it. He believed. Let's say Hitler believed that murdering... No, 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 no. Let's not let's say Hitler. Why the fuck did you bring up Hitler in the first place? Do you think it's okay to own people as slaves? Do you think it's morally permissible to own people as slaves? Um, who's to say that it's wrong? That's not an answer to my question. You're going to just sit here and dodge all day, or do you want to actually learn something? What was the question? I'm sorry. Do you think it's morally permissible to own people as property, as slaves? Uh, well, we have to define morality objectively. No, we don't. No, we don't. I asked you what you thought. Why is it so difficult for you to have an original thought? Having a slave. If you take care of the slave and they live in your home and they, you know, serve you and you, you feed them and uh, close them and shelter them, sure. There's nothing wrong with slavery, quote unquote, as people think Whoa. of it from. Uh, Congratulations. Whoa. You have just completely embarrassed yourself in the worst possible Whoa. way because you're now advocating for slavery. But at least you're consistent because you agree with the Bible because the Bible's OK with slavery, too. Is it OK to hit people that are your slaves? Is it OK to beat them? If not, then why would it be wrong? 
I, no, I'm asking you. Do you think it's wrong to beat the slaves that you own? My personal opinion, I mean, that would only be subjective, right? So it doesn't matter really what I say. It matters what the word It matters what you say because I'm talking to you. If you could actually have an honest conversation instead of trying to avoid this, you might come out the other side understanding something and being a better person. Do you, Ryan, think that it is okay to beat the slaves that you own? What did the slave do to get beaten is my question. What is happening? Sorry. Why does that matter? What 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 would the slave need to do? What would a no, what would a slave need to do for you to say that it's okay for you to beat them? I mean, was it wrong for Jesus to get beat and put on a cross? You are the most dishonest caller of the fucking month, Ryan. Holy God. You are embarrassingly dishonest. Why won't you, you know why you won't answer the obvious questions? Because you know your beliefs aren't true and you know that the book is immoral. That's why. Holy I, Hannah. Yes, it is okay if, if they go against you. Yep. I believe that. Okay. Oh, no, I'm hanging up on you then. Bye. Good. Okay. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Jesus. That's my line right there. Found it. There it is. Found the Whoa. line. Found the line. There it is. Holy shit. Shannon Zen is shattered by <gasps> someone saying, God. yeah, it's okay for me to own people and beat them. What the fuck's wrong with you? Shouldn't Who are you to tell me it's wrong? Should everybody be fucking busted up by that, though? What is yeah. happening? Welcome How? to 15 years of my life. This is not the first time that somebody has uh, advocated that it's okay to beat people and own them as property. Holy God. Now, I understand why. So, like, I advocate for, like, better conversations and better dialogues. But... The people that call this show sometimes test test me because I think <laughs> that's, you can't have an honest conversation with somebody who says owning slaves is okay, and you know you you can find rational justifications for beating them. Yeah, like you can't. It's like if they disrespected me. So I, now I wonder. Now I worry because that mentality from Ryan means that Ryan should never have a spouse. And God forbid a child. Yeah. God forbid a child. Ryan should be alone until his brain is fixed. Like, your justifications for morality, you, you're, you have to admit, essentially, at that point that they're Bible-based. So you're to be consistent, you're saying things like that. Which means that you're going outside of rational justifications that any normal person would agree with. And he brought up baby kill. I don't think he's honest. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, no. let's let's take another one. We're gonna let's talk to somebody different. We're yeah. gonna oh, we're gonna talk to, um. to linguists. Um, oh, get this eye busted the xenometer. 